If you've been finding yourself falling into the color analysis rabbit hole lately, if you've tried any of the filters on Instagram or on TikTok, and if you just really want to know how to figure out which colors are your best, then I really hope today's video is gonna make it so much easier for you. Today's video contains a paid partnership with Monica Vinader, one of my absolute favorite jewelry brands, and we're also going to talk a little bit about undertone, figuring out if there's even a difference between wearing silver or gold jewelry, how to figure out if one is better than the other. Let's have a talk about it. Let's see if we can figure it out together in today's video. I love that color analysis is having a revival these years. I think it's important to keep in mind that it's not a religion. At the end of the day, it's about what the eyes see, how you perceive the color. Let's just get back to basics here because it doesn't have to be that hard. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Sina. I'm a certified stylist and color consultant from Denmark. And my mission is to help people from all over the world increase their style confidence through a slower and more mindful wardrobe editing approach. As much as I appreciate color analysis as a way to find your best colors, as in the colors that make you radiate and that harmonize with your natural features, there's no such thing as an A plus B equals C calculation to it either. As much as we all would love color analysis to be the one thing that gives us a straight answer once and for all, we all perceive color differently, and so even the most skillfully trained consultants will sometimes type people differently. And this doesn't mean that either of us is wrong. At the end of the day, it's about what the eyes see, how you perceive the color. There are different techniques out there. I've mentioned this a couple of times on my channel before. The most commonly known technique is the seasonal approach, and then there's the tonal system, which the latter is my preferred technique. It's the one I've been trained to use. I once was a skeptic of color analysis too. I found it confusing, I found it limiting, and generally I just had trouble seeing that there should be any difference between wearing what would seemingly be your best and your worst colors. Like, why not just wear what you like, right? And that right there is so important, even if you do get a color analysis, wear what feels right first and foremost, because a sustainable wardrobe is one that's centered around emotional durability, and only you will know when something feels right or not. So color psychology should be a bigger part of discussion here, I think. If your style isn't romantic and girly, well, then that explains why you don't feel comfortable wearing, for example, blush pink. Now, just as a disclaimer, I am not slacking off seasonal analysis whatsoever or any other type of color analysis tool. For that matter, lots of consultants work with different techniques. I even know some people who like to combine seasonal and tonal analysis. So that's really up to the individual consultant, I think. So despite similarities, both seasonal and tonal analysis are based on Munsell, color theory, depth, undertone, clarity, the two techniques are not entirely the same. With seasonal analysis, undertone is most often one of the first traits to describe your color type. So you basically need to know what your undertone is to be able to place yourself within the right season, and then you build on from there. So it has 12 different color types or seasons in total, and then you can add on to that with sub-seasons to tailor make things a little bit further. Tonal analysis, which again is the approach I use, seeks to describe your dominant, secondary, and tertiary traits. Your dominant trait or your color type is always listed as the first most important trait. And here undertone might not be the most important factor about your looks. So in those cases, you'll have colors of varying undertones in your palette. This approach has 24 palette combinations or color types, if you will. So this technique kind of seeks to simplify color analysis because such a big part of the palette will simply be built around your most dominant trait rather than having to match several different traits all at once. Before we get into the six dominant color types of tonal analysis, do you also find that you look good in both gold and silver? A lot of the discussion evolving around 
color analysis is highly focused on finding your skin undertone. So you'll have heard about various ways to find your undertone, like comparing how soft white and bright white looks on you, or you've tried the jewelry test where you compare silver and gold jewelry, and maybe it's left you super confused because you honestly can't really tell the difference. You can't see that one should be better than the other. You've also been told to look at the color of your veins to guide you. The color of your veins might not give you a very precise answer, especially not if your skin overtone is kind of making it tricky to see what color your veins really are. If you must do anything, the comparison test is way better because that's what we do in analysis too. Surely you can lean to one side of the undertone scale, but undertone doesn't have to be your most dominant trait. So as mentioned earlier, today's video is sponsored by Monica Vinader, which is a brand I've known and loved for quite some years now. They offer jewelry made in 100% recycled sterling silver and 18 karat gold vermeil with ethically sourced gemstones, diamonds and pearls. Furthermore, all packaging is made from recycled materials as well as being recyclable. They also offer a rewear and repair program to prolong the life of your pieces, ultimately to help you wear more and buy less, which if you know me is something I've been trying to practice when it comes to fashion and style for years now. As Monica Vinader offers both gold and silver jewelry, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk to you guys about the whole undertone dilemma, which in short means that, well, if you have a cool undertone in your skin, you look best in silver jewelry, and if you have a warm undertone, you look best in gold. Through the years, I've been exploring both gold and silver jewelry myself. I've been switching between the two. And since I've been working with hundreds of clients for color analysis now for the past couple of years, both virtually, but also in person, I've learned that this seems to be the approach for most people. Some people like to mix and match gold and silver. A lot of people will actually find that they look great in both gold and silver. I do personally prefer how silver looks on me these days. Maybe it's simply because I have discovered that I'm just is mostly drawn to soft cool colors and I just think it ties in well with silver but I still have gold pieces in my stash too and who knows I might be in the mood for whipping those out sometime too either way I'm definitely saving those pieces maybe my daughter would want to wear those someday so I think unless you see a clear difference between gold and silver don't necessarily overthink this part simply go for pieces that suit your style your life, your preferences and your personality, which in my opinion is far more important in terms of longevity. So what I love about Monica Vinader is that their pieces are super versatile, they're interchangeable, you can make some really unique combinations for both day and night. A lot of the designs are kind of organic and they have some kind of an edge to them, like this square bangle here, which I love, the chunky hammered ring that I wear every day, and even the cute little heart bracelet has these odd shaped hearts to make it less perfect and give it a bit of an etch. So to me, these pieces fit my style personality so well, being a perfect mix of classic, wearable and all with an etch at the same time. All the jewelry I'm wearing in this video will be linked down below. So if you see something that you like or that you would like to add to your own style and wardrobe, there will also be a discount code for you to use down below of this video. So again, I'm not trying to say that undertone is not important here. I'm not trying to say that seasonal analysis is not great for looking at undertone, but again, it doesn't have to be your most dominant trait. Your dominant trait could instead be that your look is simply soft, like me, I am a soft color type. So little contrast, an overall muted and blended look, or on the contrary, maybe your dominant trait is that you have a lot of contrast. So super clear eyes and high contrast between your hair, your skin color and your eye color, which are all the three factors we look at in tonal color analysis. So if you're trying to self-diagnose, just stop for a second, have a look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what is the first thing I think of when I look at myself? If these are your features, these are your colors. So again, with tonal analysis, we're kind of trying to simplify things a little bit. We have six dominant color types. Now it's important to say that sometimes it's not straightforward to place yourself and in cases like that I'm happy to help I do offer virtual services open for worldwide bookings but if ever you're in doubt simply do the comparison test where you compare colors under your chin to see which you prefer if for example you're in between soft and clear two very different palettes one being very bright the other one being very soft and muted try to compare soft and bright colors and see how you feel see which colors you feel like 
bring out the best in you, light. A light color type will have fair skin, light colored hair, fair eyelashes, fair eyebrows, and a generally delicate look. So because we're just simply trying to reflect your natural look into the palette and have like a, you know, harmony between the colors you wear, your colors will simply be light and delicate, kind of like the stereotypical pastel colors. On the opposite side of that, we have the deep color type. So the depth of the skin tone can vary from light to deep, but you are guaranteed to have dark colored eyes and dark hair. So a rather strong, deep and dark look to you. So this means that your colors will be deep or dark as many people refer to them as. So think black, deep brown, navy, burgundy, etc. And if ever you want to wear something less dark than that, you need to think bright rather than light. So again, like these super delicate pastels because they might sometimes feel like they wash you out a little bit. Warm. Now the next two color types are the exception to the undertone rule because the dominant traits here are very much evolved around undertone. So in this case, you'll have a clearly golden or warm look to you, meaning that your best colors would also be more warm and golden. So all the way from your neutrals like beige and brown to your accent colors like orange, yellow, purple, etc. Cool. Similar to that, we have the cool color type, which frankly can vary in how they look, but you likely will feel like warm and golden colors like yellow and orange look too heavy on you, and that the cooler and clearer colors tend to look more brilliant and healthy on you. A lot of people who go gray at some point in their lives will also discover that they can start exploring cooler colors, even if they never really did that in the past. So this is another way where this technique differs a little bit from seasonal analysis because it means that you can actually kind of evolve and change your color type as you go through life and as you change your look. And I've just had so many clients who were once one, you know, typed one color type and then they go gray and they're like, you know what, something just isn't working anymore. Um, it doesn't have to be the case for everyone, but for some people, this is definitely something they go through. And so if that's you, then please know that, you know, you do have the option to tweak your palette a little bit. Clear. The most striking feature about a clear will be their eyes. So it can be a really clear blue, green, or even golden, honey brown kind of color. So strong contrast between skin, hair, and eyes generally. That could be fair skin with dark hair, and then remember the clear eye color too. Um, dark skin will have a pearly white smile, and then again, the white iris of the eyes will stand clearly in contrast to the rest of your face. Um, so your best colors are clear and bright, and if you want to wear neutrals, which you totally can, just make sure to pair them in contrasting combinations rather than wearing beige from head to toe, because this can look a little bit bland on you. So maybe instead go for, let's say, a chocolate brown and then a soft white, for example, just so that you have that higher contrast between the colors that you wear. Soft. And then finally, we have the soft color type. Again, because we don't limit ourselves entirely just to undertone, we simply define the dominant trait of your look, soft in this case, and offer you equal soft colors to go with that. So I'm a soft color type myself. I have dark blonde hair, brown eyebrows and lashes, and my overall look is more muted rather than being super contrasting and clear. So my colors are mostly grayish and kind of muted and tonal combinations work really well for soft color types. Um, I'm tipping slightly to the cool side of the undertone scale, meaning that my secondary colors are cool. But frankly, I do find that I can get away with wearing slightly warmer colors too, especially in the summer when I have a little bit more glow in my skin. Um, however, after switching up my makeup to cooler colors and also since going for silver jewelry rather than gold, I can see how it all kind of ties in well. Uh, so I'm definitely not saying that undertone isn't important, it's just that it shouldn't necessarily be what holds you back from exploring your colors because it can be confusing to so many people and again, you might not just be warm or cool. So there you have it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, like I said to start off with, do remember that color analysis is a much more personal and kind of subjective matter than what it's often made up to be online. Um, there are other aspects to think about too, like style preferences, personality, not to mention color psychology, which as I said, really should be a bigger part of the discussion too. Simply a guidance tool 
not a religion. We're trying to have fun here with colors. We're trying to liberate ourselves. And hopefully today's video made it a little bit easier for you to figure out what kind of colors to look for. Before we wrap up, I just want to say a huge thank you to Monica Vinader for sponsoring today's video. Do make sure to check out the links and the additional discount code in the description box down below if you saw something that you like. And then lastly, I just want to thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to keep the conversation kind. Remember to have an open mind when you're entering this discussion. Um, with that, take care. Um, I hope to see you around here again. Do make sure to give this video a like. Make sure you subscribe to my channel as well before you leave. I would love to have you around and then I hope to see you very soon with another video. Bye guys.